It's still plus politics. Now, the sudden move by the Nigerian youths uh, to fully participate in the country's general elections is not unconnected to the 2020 NSAS protest, which served as an eye-opener to that young Nigerian uh, so that we can influence critical decisions in the country. Currently, most of the presidential and governorship candidates of the major political parties running for the 2023 general elections have vowed to ensure youth inclusiveness in their administrations if elected into office. It has also been observed that over 70% of those thronging to the facility for registration of youths uh, uh, registration actually are youths, I beg your pardon. Now, they are also preparing to make changes in the 2023 elections. But joining us to discuss this uh, is Deji Awobide. He is a legal practitioner. And of course, Olaleko Ige is a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Hei Ampua. All right. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to start with you, Olaleko. Um, a lot of people have made reference to the fact that the energy, the spirit behind the 2020 NSAS protest, um, be it short-lived, has seemed to have resonated with what we're seeing today uh, with the number of young people who are going out to get their PVCs, especially for those who seemingly are campaigning for uh, the Labour Party presidential campaign, uh, presidential candidate, I beg your pardon, uh, Mr. Peter Albi. But really, is there a connection of sorts? Do you agree with that? Well, I can't see any connection between uh, the NSAS campaign and 2023 general election since 2020. Remember, we've had the um, election in Anambra. We just had election in the Kitty State. We had an election in Lagos State, I think for Lagos East Senatorial District. I hope I'm correct. And in all of these three elections, less than 30% uh, of the registered voters have actually turned out on election day. So I'm not seeing any correlation between uh, what happened during the NSAS campaign and what we are seeing at the moment. Close to, close to a million registered voters in the Kitty State and roughly 310,000 or 320,000 uh, people voted during the last governorship election in the Kitty State. So we are wondering, uh, it's not just about PVC collection, really. It's about people wanting to come out to vote. Are you seeing that desire? Are you seeing that urge in them to come out? We've had shouts about people going to collect their PVC and all of that stuff, but they've not really translated into a vast uh, majority or greater majority of people turning out on um, election day. I'm yet to see that correlation, at least not with the last three elections we've had in Nigeria. Our true state governorship election is next, uh, next month in, in July. Let's see whether there will probably be a better turnout of voters than what we have seen in Anambra and what we have seen in the Kitty State. I, I, I hear many pundits, many analysts, many politicians, in fact, many young people say, oh, well, uh, this was not as what we expected, but let's see if the next one. We've been saying that for the last three election cycles. And so it, it makes me want to push you again to say, what is, the, what is it about us that makes us so energetic before the elections, but then when the elections come, we're dead cold? I think one linkage I, I, I can say here is that, look, I think more than often not, political parties don't throw up people or candidates who connect with the people, who can connect with the youth. I think a lot of uh, young Nigerians are, are still disenchanted with the, with the way and manner political parties recruit their leadership. You no, know, check the last primaries of the two major political parties, and you could find out that, look, there were major surprises in many states across the federation. So, the, I think the missing link is because political parties don't throw up candidates that the youth can connect with, candidates that the vast uh, greater majority of Nigerians can connect with. So, if the political parties, whose primary responsibility it is to recruit leaders, to recruit candidates, to recruit the best of the best for Nigerians to see, then we can continue to see that missing link uh, between a greater number of people turning out to vote for election and the kind of candidate political parties have trope. What we have more than often not are uh, accidents of placement, people who 
who, who struggle to get into certain position, not necessarily uh, because they are the best, but because Godfathers have thrown them off. And more than often, not, people don't connect with these candidates. Okay. Um, Barista, where is that spirit of the NSARS, the spirit behind the campaign, the spirit be behind that protest? And I'm not talking about the violent ones who hijacked that protest, the, the hoodlums, the, the, the touts or the paid people. I'm talking about the young people who were sick and tired of the police um, wrongly um, uh, convicting them, police officers taking advantage of them, those who were tired of bad governance, uh, and those who said enough is enough. Where is that spirit? And just as I asked uh, the fine gentleman, why do we think that this spirit might be behind the mass number of people who are coming out to get their PVCs? Again, what's the guarantee that when these PVCs are collected, they will not just become ID cards when election day, you know, comes? Uh, thank you, Maria. Uh, I think your question flows from the assumption that uh, those who are trying to collect the PVCs now are all in favor of uh, Peter Obi, or largely, you know, is driven by that sentiment to go out and go for Peter Obi. Well, um, just let me remind you also that among the large number of youths who are trying to get the PVCs, you have youths who also belong uh, to the APC or who are preference for the APC for the PDP and other political parties. So it is a false assumption to just think that, oh, this drive is largely because of the Labour Party candidates. Now, having said that, uh, you also need to understand that, yes, the youth can have all the drive and all the uh, desire to go out and vote. But if you do not vote on election day, then you can as well kiss whatever ambitions, whatever desires you have goodbye. It's very important that you, you get the, the youth to go out there on that day and vote. Now, what you've seen over the years, and as Oladi um, uh, mentioned earlier, is that these political parties that are established, the PDP, the APC, they have structures on grounds, they have party members at one level who are ready to risk the hardship uh, that the election process always shows up in Nigeria, stay on the queue for hours, sit down and stand by their votes, and ensure that the votes are counted. Now, I'm not sure that when it comes to election day, that you have as much use really turn out and vote on election day. I think it's for many reasons. Now, there's a fear of thuggery, there's a fear of violence that could happen on election day. So for that reason, many people will just um, sit back and uh, try to avoid any conflict that will likely happen. Uh, and don't also forget that these particular world level uh, politicians, they are grassroots politicians, they know everybody in the area, they, are, they, they mobilize well ahead of time. If you recall, the APC began a voter, massive voter drive, I think it was two years ago, um, to register people all across the country. So you would be wrong to discount the presence that these established political parties have and to assume that the NSAS spirit is what is driving this people movement. Um, although people have argued on social media that uh, Peter Obi is the third force, they don't want to put Atiku or the Jagaban, but Obi is their, is their preference. But like I always say, and like many people who are very bad in politics in Nigeria would, would, uh, would say, that they don't only use it on social media. Okay, so no matter how much noise or how much discussions you have on social media, it must translate to actual voting on election day. It must translate to mobilizing everybody, all and sundry, to go out and vote for your candidate on that day. So that's why, even though the spirit, it seems as if oh, the youth are tired, they want to change. But you also need to ensure that children are put in place to have you know, people at every level, what level, state level, local government level, to push the agenda of which, whichever candidate uh, that the youth are supporting. But it will be wrong to assume that all the youth are popular will be. Uh, there are also youths who are actively supporting uh, the APC candidates. There are also youths actively supporting the PDP candidates. And if you see the comments that you have on social media, you will see that um, this, these views are largely divided along yes, those lines. So the polarization of those views along those candidates. Hmm. Uh, so it would be wrong to just assume that uh, this massive you know, drive is all about Peter Obi. I beg to disagree on that. Perfect. Let me take you to Ekiti State. It just happened over the weekend, the governorship elections. And I just spoke with somebody from the SDP campaign uh, for Shegoni. And not just the SDP 
But even the ADP uh, candidate complained about the um, some irregularities uh, uh, during that election. And I'd like to just, you know, um, say what the lady said. I'm just going to um, not exactly say in her words, but she, she, she accused the APC, the PDP and the SDP of vote buying both at the state and local levels. And when the SDP man was uh, arguing that, oh, the ruling party um, was, was the one engaging in most of the vote buying, I asked a question, which I'm going to pose to you now. Should we be saying, or should we be uh, apprehending INEC for vote buying? Should we be accusing INEC of not doing their jobs? If the people themselves who, as he said, have been um, impoverished, are tired of bad governance, uh, the people who um, seemingly wanted a new lease of life are the same people who have been induced and have taken these inducements and voted for the APC. Should they not be the ones that we should be targeting our energies at instead of the INEC, whose job is to conduct elections? Uh, well, I think asking INEC to try to... INEC already has the law in place as relates to vote buying, so it's legal, right? But you cannot task INEC with that duty of apprehending people who are uh, engaging in vote buying on election day when they have to deal with the logistics of conducting the election. How would you expect the election officer who's on duty to leave his as primary assignment and then go ahead and apprehend um, um, people who are engaging in vote buying? That's the job of the security agencies. And you did see some videos um, of ESC officials arresting people who they um, uh, were felt were engaging in vote buying. So there's some balance there as well, because also in Adwekiti, I did see some videos of people uh, on the queue insisting that they would not sell uh, their votes. They said in local balance that our ah, ah, can't be more, meaning that we are not going to collect our money to cook a pot of soup any longer. Mm. We are going to exercise our franchise and vote our conscience. But you cannot legislate for all individuals in that regard, because mm. it's a matter of conscience. If a person feels that uh, he wants to collect money and still vote, because if you if, if, there are two ways to it. There could be collection of money and not voting for the person who paid you the money. There could be go and vote for my person. Let me see what you show me the ballot box from a distance, uh, the ballot paper from a distance, and then I'll pay you eventually. Mm. And there will be those who will collect the money and still go ahead and vote for their candidates. So we can't really say exactly how much of an impact. Uh, the vote buying uh, uh, played out on the results because we don't know how everybody voted. Okay, so but of course those who were engaged in it were apprehended at least largely from the bills that we saw. And uh, really and truly, there's only a limit to how much laws you can make. The, the people themselves also must feel the pinch. They must actually be fed up of the entire system to say we would not collect any money in return or in exchange for our votes. And so you got to a level where everybody is, is not enlightened. And the problem I also have with education and enlightenment is that there are those who are also enlightened who also took money for this uh, to extend their franchise. So education really, you can argue that those who did that were illiterate. But we cannot say for a fact that all of them are illiterate. There will be people who are also enlightened amongst them who still took the money because it was being offered and they took it. I still would have voted one way or the other. Okay. So when it comes to vote buying, it's something that we need to find a way around. We need to sit down together and look for how well to make the laws effective to prevent vote buying. Because even the policeman you put at the polling booth, you have one or two policemen against maybe a, a, a barrage of thugs who are there lying low. So uh, what is the security arrangement for the policeman at the polling booth? Hmm. If we arrest and apprehend one person, what happens to him when he's going home? Is there any? Is there any? Is there any? Is there any uh, security apparatus in place to protect him if he goes, does the right thing, mm. or are you going to his face when the chips are down? So those are the issues that play out, you know, pragmatically on election day. Okay. That it will be unfair to say or abuse a policeman for not doing his job when he knows that his life is on the line. Okay, back to you, uh, Olaleko. Um, he's just made an interesting point about the voter education. Um, aspect of our electoral process. But 
I'd like to quote the ADP governorship candidates, the woman, who said, despite the voter education and sensitization campaigns that had been done before the elections, these parties and, of course, the Ekiti people still engaged in the, the issue of vote buying. So does it mean that this sensitization does not really work? Is it pouring water on the back of a chicken? Is it that we Nigerians in ourselves are not yet as tired as we think that we are? And so, or maybe we have also acclimatized, or could it be that we have grown into becoming used to the inducements? Because you see, it's, let me use the local parlance, have bread is better than none. What exactly is the issue here? Because again, this might one way or the other determine on a larger scale what will happen in 2023. If you have an idea, help us understand. Well, I think it's a mixture of a lot of things. You can talk of the general uh, Mali in the system, uh, talking in terms of corruption. Uh, I'm sure you know that um, uh, we have uh, uh, serious question marks when it comes to corruption. We've heard uh, issues about Nigeria among the most corrupt nations in the world. So you could say, look, corruption is part and parcel of our lives as of today. Then also add it to the fact that, look, one of the things that encourages impunity in any system is lack of quick dispensation of justice. So you could also blame our judicial system for part of the reasons why we still continue to have um, vote buying. Because if you apprehend people and you are unable to prosecute them one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, six years, ten years later, then you continue to encourage impunity because people now know that even if I'm arrested and taken to court, I may never get justice in 20 years. I may never get justice in 10 years. So you see part of what encourages uh, impunity now, part of your political parties may be encouraged to continue to do this because they know that if people are arrested on an election day for vote buying, the case may not even get to court. If the case does arrive to court, when will justice be served? And remember, like lawyers will always say, when justice is served, it's not just to the accused. What of the society? What of the court itself? What of the administration, you know, of uh, justice in the country? So you begin to understand why we continue to have impunity in the system and why a lot of things uh, continue to happen. So it's a mixture of a lot of things as to why we continue to have a vote buying. And like uh, uh, my friend on the other side has said, look, it's not just about uh, ignorance. We have people who are well-educated. We have people who are even well enlightened, who are also willing you know, to also sell their vote. Some for 5,000, some for a little as 1,000, some for 10,000. Of course, remember we also had uh, the issue of a delegate election uh, across uh, political parties only recently. And you are aware of allegations of delegates being offered money in foreign currencies to vote for particular candidates. So it's not just about during the election, you are talking about vote buying. You're also talking about vote buying, even during delegate conference of uh, uh, delegate uh, convention of political parties. What if some of those selling their vote during the general election are also saying, this is an opportunity for me to collect my own share. After all, I was not a delegate, you know, to the conversion of a particular political party, this is an opportunity for uh, me to also get my own share. You know, so you can see the way we are exporting some of these things. Because even during a party's convention, you hear of allegations of people being offered money to vote for a particular uh, candidate. You are aware that EFCC was also present at the National Convention of the APC and at the National Convention of the PDP. What was EFCC doing there? If not that there were allegations of people being put over in foreign currencies. So you begin to understand that, look, vote buying isn't just going to be down to voter education. We must also be able to successfully and quickly to prosecute those who have been arrested during elections for buying votes. All right. Well, because of time, Daisy, I'll just give you a minute to respond to this. What, how optimistic are you, Deji? Um, in terms of the youth and, of course, the average Nigerian who you and I think uh, has been overly impoverished or is tired of what's happening in today's Nigeria and wants a better 
opportunity. How optimistic are you that we will come out in full force and cast our votes for the right person, depending on who that right person is and who we think that right person is? Are you sure that we are going to see a renewed vigor come 2023, or is it just going to be business as usual in a minute? Well, I, I, think, I, I think that as it concerns um, the elections next year, I believe that uh, the candidates of the APC and the PDP, as well as the Labour Party, have a very large following. Um, I believe that all candidates will try to energize their base to come out and vote en masse. You did see the arrival of uh, um, the Jagaban, Ashwajibala Ahmed Sumbu, to Lagos, and the number of people who, are, who were present to welcome him back. I believe that the uh, former VP Atiku will also command the kind of following as well uh, in the north. And I'm, I believe that Peter Obi also would command that kind of following. So the issue eventually would, would boil down to who is able to get as much people to the polling booth on election day, who is able to galvanize the base to come out and vote. So whoever wins the election will be the person who has been able to successfully get his people to vote all over the country. And I do not think that um, the way it's going, that, they, that just... Um, Discussing on social media is will be sufficient. You need to go to the grassroots level. And this is where the PDP and the ABC have the advantage because they have structures that have lasted a very long time. Okay. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you, Deji. I will be there. He is a legal practitioner and Olale Konyege is a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you for having us. All right. And thank you for staying with us. Uh, that's the show tonight. I'm Mary Anna Cohn. We will be back tomorrow talking about the biggest stories in our political scene. And of course, don't forget, if you missed the show, you can watch live or you can watch a recorded version on our YouTube handles, which is Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I'm Mary Anna Cohn. Have a good evening.